to this edition of the Telescope Makers Workshop. My name is Francis O'Reilly, and I'm going to be discussing a subject that doesn't get an awful lot of attention, but it's critically important, and that is the stand upon which we make our telescopes. A good stand has certain characteristics. It has to be the right height to, op to work your optic. It should be round so that you can go around it and it should be relatively lightweight and portable so that you can put it away when you're done. It also needs to be sturdy. These characteristics were all embodied in one particular device created by Dick Parker of Connecticut one day around the year 2000. At that time Dick, in his spare time, decided that he was going to run a telescope making class and knew that he needed some manner for the students to uh, make a telescope, some sort of a stand that would, upon which they could put their optics. He came up with a very simple, inexpensive, easy to build, truss design stand that we now call the Parker Barrel. And if you're like me and you have a wife who doesn't really understand why you want to make telescopes, it has an added advantage. And that added advantage is that it can also be used as a cake decorating stand under the proper circumstances. Tonight, we will discuss how to make a Parker barrel. I'm going to go through the materials that are required. It's very inexpensive, under $50 for all the parts. The steps that are required to do it and its various uses. A good Parker barrel consists of a number of elements, relatively inexpensive. Most of mine start out, they're two, they're two feet, 24 inches in diameter, and I've made them with three quarter inch plywood. I would buy a two foot by four foot square of plywood, three quarter inch plywood from the Home Depot, cut it in half so it's two by two, then I would find the center of each, put a small nail in the center, trace out or scribe out a two foot diameter uh, circle, take a saber saw and cut the circle out. When I was looking for wood the other night on my way back from a friend's house in Connecticut, I stopped at Lowe's. And when I went into the lumber section, I found where they had the smaller parts, smaller pieces of lumber, the uh, two by four foot pieces of three quarter inch plywood. On my way there, what to my wondering eyes should appear, but exactly what I needed, Ponderosa panels. Now these panels are pre-cut, one inch thick, and uh, two foot in diameter. Exactly what I need very, very good panels that can be used for the top and bottom of a Parker barrel. And what's even more surprising, the price was right. These were $17, $17.50 roughly, I think it was $17.54 a piece. I bought two of them. However, in the past, as I said, I have cut out plywood, and it's not that hard to do. Does it take me 10 minutes? Probably so. Another way you could do it is with a jig and a router works fine, cuts everything out very quickly, and it's even cheaper because the plywood is probably $8 to $10 to $12 at the outside. So it's relatively inexpensive. I wanted to go a little bit more. I wanted the one inch, the pre-cut. It was just worth it to me to do it, particularly for this project because it will look really nice. And uh, given that I'm actually going to be using this project when I'm all done in all likelihood for my wife, who's going to be using it for a cake stand. I thought the thicker, almost picnic table, uh, maybe even better than picnic table, uh, manufactured product was probably better. In addition to that, I need one four foot, two by four or a two by three. Now I went looking for, at Lowe's, I went looking for uh, a two by four, four foot, and I couldn't find any. One of the young men in the lend, uh, lumber department offered to give me one for free. I don't like to take things for free, it was kind of him to offer, 
uh, and they, the smallest two by fours they had for sale were eight foot. Then I found a two by three and I thought I'd give that a shot. So we'll, we'll try that. In addition to that, you need four six foot one by twos. And these are gonna be cut in half or probably a little bit more. We'll get into that later uh, to form the legs. And there will be a total of eight legs uh, that are off at triangles. You'll need at least 50, five, zero, uh, two and a half inch deck, uh, deck screws. And another 50, I use number eight by inch and a half deck screws. And everything, everything, everything is always screwed and glued so that it doesn't come apart. The extra strength is well worth it. And so I use either Type Bond 2 or Type Bond 3, which I buy at the Home Depot. Why do I buy it at the Home Depot instead of Lowe's? No particular reason other than there is a Home Depot in my neighborhood and the Lowe's is, uh, is a little bit further away. Either one is fine. And if you really want to be aggressive about and do the right thing, buy what you can locally at your local hardware store. That's, that's probably my best, uh, my best bet. I go to Palmer Hardware. I live in Brewster, New York. Palmer's up on Route 22, uh, pretty much right in the heart of the town of Southeast, which is, which is where Brewster resides. Um, so those are the materials you need. If you spend $50 getting it all, uh, that's a lot. Uh, maybe the screws, you know, cost a little bit. The type bond glue is not too expensive. Uh, you know, it's a very inexpensive project to build. Well, given that, we're going to start measuring, and then remember, measure twice, cut once. Once we've measured, we're going to cut. Once we've measured twice, we're going to cut. And then we're going to put this whole uh, this whole project together. Now you may recall in some of my earlier videos I had a cat, Fortunato the Contaminator. Fortunato is gone now. I don't know where Fortunato is. We never found her. She took off one day and that was the last we saw of her. I do, however, I now have, in addition to the fluffy, I've got two dogs, Jack and Bailey. Jack is a Beagle Basset Hound. Bailey is Looks like a small St. Bernard. They're both very friendly and they'll be with us today as I go through how to make a, a, a Parker a Parker barrel or a Parker stand. Plans for the Parker barrel are available on the Stellafane website. That's www.stellafane.org. They're denominated as the ASGH grinding barrel as a reference to the Astronomical Society of Greater Hartford. However, it is actually the uh, Parker barrel that uh, is shown. So you can get the plans to how to make this from the ASGH website. I should say there is one particular part that you really should look at the plans to make properly. Welcome back. As you can see, it's another day. I have a little more work to do. Today we're going to measure. and. What I'm going to measure is the length of the various elements of the uh, table and then pri uh, in preparation to making cuts. There's a saying, measure twice, cut once, and that's pretty uh, appropriate. None of the measurements that we're making here, none of the cuts we ma we're making are critical. But if you're going to make a cut, you might as well make it where it's supposed to be. Now the first thing I'm going to do is to measure out about 50 inches off of this 2 by 3 it's a fairly long 8 foot 2 by 3 I'm going to cut about 50 inches off of it. I've got a tape measure that I bought this morning uh, as I'd lost all of mine for some reason. Nobody seems to know anything about it. Uh, I bought it for my son. He works at a local electrical supply store and I figured as long as I was going to buy something I might as well keep my money in Putnam County, New York where I live and shop local. So what I'm going to do, I'm looking for eight six inch pieces. I'm going to cut off about 50 inches from this 96 inch uh, piece of lumber and the reason is I'm going to allow myself a little extra room uh, both for the curve which is the width of the saw blade and also to make a mistake here and again. So I'm going to mark this at 50 inches and I'm not using a carpenter's pencil, I'm actually using a, um, a Sharpie. And I'm going to use 
a uh, carpenter square. Make sure the mark is correct. And then mark it square. Now I've got it marked. And if this is 50 inches, I'm just going to double check. It should be 46 inches from the other end. Taking it out, it's 46 inches. So I've made a mark at 50 inches. This is probably the least critical dimension of all, although I, I do stand by my statement that none of the dimensions are critical. Now what I'm going to do is to cut off part of this uh, stud, and then I'm going to mark, mark the others at uh, six inch increments. I've just made a cut with my saw, cutting this stud down to a more manageable length. You'll notice that I'm wearing eye protection, something I highly recommend at all times when you're working with power tools. When you're just measuring, there's really no need. But if you're doing anything where something's likely to be flying around in the air, it's uh, very important to make sure that you have eye protection. Now I'm just going to measure off a number of uh, six inch increments I go to six inches from the edge. Just going to make a couple of dots, one at a time. Make sure everything lines up. Okay, there's six inches. Twelve. Eighteen. Twenty-four. Thirty, thirty-six, forty-two, brings me up to about fifty. Draw my lines. Measure the last one from the other side. I've made my measurements on the first piece. Now I'm going to put that aside and we're going to talk about the legs. Now I've got four pieces of one by two lumber, each of which is six feet long. As you can tell, I'm not six feet tall. I have a certain height that I like to have my barrel, and this height right here is perfect for me. It will also work for my wife with her 
cakes. And this height is about 38 inches, 38 inches above the ground. <clears throat> now to get to the height or the proper length of these, what I need to do is I need to realize I want it 38 inches above the ground. Each of the round circles I'll be using is an inch thick. That brings me down to 36 inches. And by doing some trigonometry and realizing that the base of the triangle will be six inches, uh, that's a given. You can come up to the proper length of the leg and uh, that really does work out because uh, the sign of uh, the roughly 84 degree angle that we're dealing with is uh, so small, uh, so large rather, it comes out to really about 36 and a quarter inches. Now given that these are not, these legs are not going to be touching up against the bottom, but they're going to be anchored into the, um, the post that we're going to be cutting in a little while, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them off at 36 inches and that should be quite sufficient to make the, uh, the, the uh, stand exactly right. So basically, I've got four of them here, I'm going to be cutting them in half. That will give me a total of eight legs of the right length. And we'll be making our cuts on those tomorrow. Right now, I'm just going to take them, measure them, and uh, mark them. And let's see, 72 and, 72 and a quarter inches, interesting. Now I'm just going to mark it down to 36 inches one way. This is absolutely not a critical dimension. There's a lot of room to play. So I might actually give it 36 and an eighth. As I'm sure many of you can tell, I don't earn my living as a uh, furniture maker. I have a uh, job that, uh, that requires me to work at a desk or in a forum setting, but it doesn't really unfortunately require me to work with my hands. So if you're thinking this is too much, as you're watching me bumbling around here, and that's exactly what I'm doing, I'm bumbling around. Uh, think again, this is not really a very hard project. And I would encourage you to give it a try. Now I've made my measurements. Just going to measure them across so I can put a bit of a line here so that I can cut tomorrow. certain amount of work every day because in addition to the cat who is at my feet right now I have two dogs and uh, they wanted to go out so I put them out on the leash 
gave them some food, they've got some water, they're doing well, but they want to be out. Okay, now here's my final measurement of the night. I've made my measurements. These measurements are all pretty accurate. I'm in good shape here. I'm going to be able to make these cuts tomorrow in addition to some additional unique cuts. And then we'll be able to go forward and uh, fasten everything together. And we're going to have a pretty interesting little work stand.